Turn now to the host of Facing South Florida, Jim DeFeeding. So what have we learned from this shutdown about uh, leadership in Washington, the leadership of both parties, the Republicans and the Democrats? I think we've learned that Chuck Schumer uh, is, is going to back down from, from what he says. At least that's what he did. It shows shutdowns do not work. They didn't work when the Republicans were behind them. They're not working now with the Democrats behind them. And yeah, Chuck Schumer made the realization that he had a bad hand, and rather than try to play it out, he tossed it away. Look, this this was this was a complete and utter loss for the Democrats. There's no way around it. You can say, as some Democrats are, well, we could always try another shutdown in two and a half weeks when that comes back up. No, if you weren't willing to try it now and stick it out, then you weren't going to be able to do it anywhere down the line. That card is now off the table. Let's talk about local lawmakers uh, from here yeah. in Florida. Our congressional delegation in South Florida, uh, only Carlos Corbello uh, voted in favor of ending the shutdown. Everybody else. No, no, uh, Mary Diaz Bilar. What happened Bilar. was, so essentially everyone voted the same way that they did before. The only person on the congressional side to flip was Carlos Cabell. He had voted, he had always said that he would not vote to continue funding the government unless there was a fix for DACA. This, but he changed his mind and voted to reopen the government. Ileana Rose Layton voted to continue the, uh, the, the government shutdown. shutdown. And Mary Diaz Bilar had never voted for the shutdown. And all the Democrats did. On the Senate side, uh, you know, Marco Rubio had consistently voted to keep the government open. Bill Nelson had initially voted for the shutdown, flipped, voted to reopen the government. So we have midterm elections coming up later this year in November. Uh, Senator Nelson is running for re-election. Mm -hmm. uh, do these votes and how everybody sort of maneuvered this shutdown, is it going to come into play? You know, it... The way time moves, you know, it seems like, you know, what occurred two weeks ago occurred six months ago. Right. So to think that something that happened in January will have major ramifications in November, I don't think so. I think a lot will happen. This was more about each side's base. The Democrats had made the calculation that they needed to give something to their base and, and show that they were willing to fight and resist the president. So they got a shutdown. Now, the base is not going to be happy with the way this turned out, but at least they tried something. And they can say. And again, while the Republicans are celebrating right now, the long term for them is not good with this. If something is not done on DACA, they are facing a real problem on their hands when it comes to losing a large block of voters for a very long time. Let's talk about the president uh, and how he made out in all of this. We know that he uh, was uh, promising early on in this mm -hmm. debate to sign whatever bill came across his desk, that he was going to take the heat uh, for mm -hmm. those uh, Republicans who might have mm -hmm. a problem uh, at home with their base, who were, who were not happy with mm -hmm. any kind of a deal on people who had come to this country illegally, even if they were children at the time. Uh, and now, uh, how does he look at the end of the day? The president, look, it's a win. There's no way around it. Republicans won, and so the president, as a Republican, wins. The role that he played in this was was to sort of like just take a step back, allow others to, to do what they do, mainly Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell was clearly the orchestrator of everything that the went Senate through here. Leader. The Senate Majority Leader. He ruled this thing. But Donald Trump's major contribution was perhaps to do nothing. Was to, was to not get in the middle of things, was to not tweet, was to not really sort of talk about what was going on in the Senate floor, and that was a, that was a benefit. He didn't get in the way of these negotiations. Now, going forward, is he an honest broker in this? Nobody seems to still know where exactly the president is. A few days ago, Mitch McConnell said we still don't know what the president right. wants. At some point, we're going to have to figure that out if there is going to be a deal. Until then, those dreamers, those DACA kids, have a lot of uncertainty, and it's scary for them, and I know that from talking to them. Jim DeFeedy. Jim, thanks very much for that analysis. There is clearly a lot more to do in Washington. We'll continue to watch the latest happenings there. We'll have a full report for you coming up tonight at 11 on the CBS 4 News Tonight. And of course, anytime you can go to our website, cbsmiami.com.